hello everyone welcome to my youtube channel and in this video i am going to show you an interesting video code. if you are using power query to bring some data from external sources and you don't want to dump that data in the worksheet like you don't need that data to be dumped in this particular file then this video is for you okay so let's suppose i have this folder path the temp okay? so let me just copy that and show you the folder structure so here is the folder okay and let's suppose i just want to see all the file names of this folder right adodb via.xlsm hidden file output and so on. i've created a name range here you can see folder pair i'll do alt a pt to get that name range value in this particular power query so i can just drill it down it's going to be like folder.files right okay problem is folder.files will bring the data recursively so let me just do content it will do without the recursion okay and let's suppose i just want to see that if it's a file or not like you know i just want to see the file only no folder so i could just go okay attributes and just give me the kind okay i think the kind has the folder yeah. so i can just ignore this folder and that's it this is just a simple query for this video demonstration but this query can be any right so this is that okay so now when i select that option i'm saying okay i don't want to load this data into box but I want to create only create connection and this is important you need to load this data into the data model if you want to get the data in VVA okay so that's important make sure you check this out and then work okay. so this data will not be dumped in the box sheet but it will be added in the data model and let me show you where where this data will be so if you go into the data tab you'll see this button that go to the power pivot window so that is this enable the data analysis add in okay so let's enable that and this is the table file details table right and you can refresh it here if you want and that's it so this is the power pivot data model window so let me just close this so this data is not loaded in the worksheet but it's loaded in the data model now i want to do some operation in that particular data using dva and that's why i'll need that data from the data model so the sequence is like you know power query is bringing the data from external sources like this for this example it's from the folder and then instead of loading the data in the worksheet because i don't not i don't need that data to see in the worksheet i am loading the data in the data model now i need to do some automation using VVA on the data so that's where I will use VVA to get the data from the data model okay that's the sequence now how can you get this data into VVA okay and if you try to find some resources you will see that there is tends to zero resources on this topic okay so this video is on this topic and it will be a little bit longer because I have to you know explain a lot of stuff so please bear with me so before going forward I would appreciate if you consider subscribing and hit the bell icon okay so let's Let's write a test code okay let me compile this okay so i do have this mod data model okay inserted so what i will do i'll just introduce few new terms if you are not familiar with this okay so one is data model okay so like let's suppose if i just say okay active workbook or i could say okay this workbook so i am pulling the data from this particular work and then mod it now if i do this then you'll see this is a, the type is as a model right dot if I say okay just go like you know like this then you will see that I do have different options like you know refresh I do have model tables if I go into the model tables then I'll see a model table collection and this is collection of model table so let me just say okay current model table as model table right and now I'm going to look through this current model table in this workbook dot model dot model table right next current model table so what this does it just look through all the model tables so what does this means that model table so the model table means that whatever table we have in this power pivot window or data model window okay so this is one table only so we'll see only one record okay so now let's see if i just print this out current model table dot name okay now press f5 to run this code or just click on this button and you'll see that okay we get that name of that particular table right file details okay? so that is the important part that okay we are getting this model table name okay but if you look at this current model table object module then you'll see that we do have that you know, model table columns on dot count or something like that right so if i just print it, print this out as well i can see the eight column so let me just check that out so we do have i guess let's see 
yeah one two three four five six seven eight so we do have eight column okay and now we need to bring the data this eight columns data but when i say okay we have that molded table columns so let me just press ctrl i it says molded table columns so that is a collection of model tables right so let's see being current call as model table column right so for each current call in model table columns now i can just print that header okay like name let's, let's run this code again so let me clear out all code and let's run this so this is the table name this is number of column this is the column header so content name extension date access date modified created kind and full up right these are the tables and if you look at this object model right so this model table column so let me see if i can find that in the object browser so model table column so that is this one right so now you can see member of model table column is creator data type and name and parent right so name is just the column header and data type is that which type of data we do have in that particular column creator actually it doesn't matter application doesn't matter parent doesn't matter. so you can see that i cannot find any way that i can just bring the data from that particular column or if we look at this current model table as well so we'll see that we cannot find any way just to get the data i can see that record count so it doesn't actually matter because what i'll do with the record count right and then we have source name we have source workbook connection and so on so source name if we just print out that source name as well so let's see run this again your so source name basically just this file details and file details so it's the same thing okay? let's see what do we have source name source workbook connection it doesn't have that you know like source workbook connection to ranges but we don't have that any way to get the data like you know just give me the data right the name you know ranges refresh text connection type opsy data connection and so on but you cannot find any way to get to the data just to an array or in any other way right so that's the main part of this video so how can we get the data from this particular table into an array okay. so that's where we'll use the adodb okay. so let me just select this okay i don't need this one as well so what i will do uh, if you haven't watched my previous video on how to read from a closed workbook using ADODB, I think you should look into that because I have explained what ADODB does in that particular video. So what we need, we'll have a connection, okay? It's a object. Now the connection is going to be this workbook dot model data model connection dot model connection dot ADO connection okay so that is my connection object now this is my connection object and then the SQL query let's say we need the SQL query so SQL query is going to be select all from and now this is the you know important part of this one right so we need to specify from where we need to bring the data and that's where that query name or table name that is the file details will come okay so you need to use open parent okay and then dollar sign this is important you need to put the dollar sign and then let's see constant query name actually let me make this a variable so later on we can convert this into a function right so query name is going to be file name. so now this is going to be query name close the parent dot and then again parent and then again dollar sign and then again this query name and then close that parent so this is my query okay so let me just print that query now if i just run this up to this part we'll see that it says okay select all from file details to file details okay so this is important so make sure put this query name and this query name same way as it is mentioned here now what we need to do we need to open a record set right so team record it as object as we are using let binding record set equals to create object adodb dot i guess okay now record set dot open so the first parameter of this open method let me just uh, do a early binding and let's say record set so you'll see 
that the first part is source then active connection okay now the source is just this sql query and then connection is going to be that previous connection that we have mentioned here now if i just up to this part then fails dot count and record set dot record count let's see if it's running properly or not so let me run this let me run this again then you can see it says that okay we have nine field but from our initial part of this video we have eight field right and we have five record count i guess that's correct so let me just put a break point and let's see what this extra field is right so let me just run this again and then if i open local window let's see the record set go into the field it says nine and if i look at this it says file details dot content just you know look into this naming convention okay it says like you know file details dot content let's see file details dot name right and file details extension and so on and if you look at this the last one that is the file details you know, underscore underscore excel underscore row number and that is the extra field that has been added by the data model to track the row number or row indexing of each of those row okay and that's the extra column that we need to remove if we want to give that record set you know data to an array so let me just show you in a real quick that how can I get the data into an array right so team result let's say result is my array so I have to do the redeeming so the redeem will be one two record set dot record count plus one because we want to put the header right actually let me just show you something interesting here we can just bring the data without the header in range if that's required but i don't think that's important but let me just show shit one dot range let's say year one dot resize record set dot record count and column is going to be record set dot fails dot count and then we can just pass that record set let me run this let's see and you can see ah, it put that data here and show one so let's see i think let me clear out just that's that way right so let me just add a new sheet and i'll use that new sheet run this code again and i get the data but only one that's going on record set a1 resize record count field counts copy from record set let's see. okay i get the data like this this is zero this is let me see the data oh this is a binary oh okay that's why that binary data let me just drop that column let me run this again now okay so we do have data like this but it's pulling only one row and that's weird it should pull all the data instead of only the first row fields.com let me just see the address here dot address a1 to h9 right so it should pull data correctly say maximum rows let's say if i specify matter or not i think eight or something like that okay that's weird okay so that's one way that we can copy the data from the record set, but i'm not sure why this is pulling only first row of the data so let me show you the other way and i think that's the better way let me just uncomment this line and this line so record count plus one for the header and one two record set dot fields dot count minus one because we have one extra header that we don't want so we need to bring the header first right current field as let's say put an object in record set dot fields so this is as a field radio db dot record field now we just do that as object i'll print out the type name current field and and if that's it okay oh, not end if next current field so it's a field object so i could just say field the good okay now what i'll do call index and then if current field dot name let me just see let's see the field name first current field name so we get this right file details and so on so what i'll just do if this is going to be the query name and then this let me just copy this 
if that is the case then and want to increment and we want to just ignore that right oh i could just say if it's not then column index is going to be previous column index plus one and then i'm just going to say okay result row is going to be always one because that's the header column index equals to current field dot me so we should substitute that or replace and what should it do is replace up this part to remove the prefix part with even all string and then we need to just do in a, another line we need to just drop the last character and that is going to be left of this length of that minus one and that's it so we'll be able to pull the headers so let's see if i just run it and let me see in the very local window the result and you can see we have that name extension data access modified and so on right so we get the header but we don't have the data yet so now we need to do the looping again so do while this record set end of fitting that's it right do while not record set dot end of the code count okay so let me just that cursor record set dot more fast and now we need another variable for row index and it will start from one right because the first row is already filled so i'll say okay row index equals to previous row index plus one and then i have to do looping again for each of those fields so i'll just bring the code and then put it here and so i'll just pause this video and finish this code and explain it okay so here is the code so we are just looping through the fields again checking that if it's not that row number and then we're just getting the value move on to the next record next row of that particular record set okay and let's see if i just run this now Set. and let's see the result array you can see radio db db xlsm hidden files output.png and sample data file.xlsx and save image rest api.xls so that is the way we can get the data from the data model to an array okay and now we can convert this into a function which will take that query name as a parameter and then it will do like you know uh, retrieve that data uh, you can also take another parameter that if you want to refresh before pulling the data and if you want to do the refreshing part so that will be like ding i think it's easier in this way this workbook dot model dot model tables yeah dot item and that is going to be the query name dot refresh so you can run that refresh so it will just do like you know you can see it's refreshing so it refreshed and then just pull that here and let me just show you if it's working if i'm putting the data in the range so a1 dot this size is going to be a1 of result row as i have mentioned the dimension myself so i know that I can delete from the u bond only dot value equals to result but actually that's not the point of using this code right to dump the data in the range we could just dump the data from the power grid itself right i'm just showing you so that you see the data is correctly polling or not so let's say we close that let me go into this section and you can see i do have the data correctly right now let me change the folder path to some other folder and see if it's working properly or not so let's suppose if i just change this to base run this code and then go back c2 now you can see env file chart urls dot json chart downloader dot exe and so on so that's it for this video let me know if you have any question or suggestion and don't forget to subscribe have a good day